We're going to continue with organization in this video. First we're going to look at collections and then we're going to look at when you would use tags versus when you would use collections or as we can also call them folders and then finally we'll end with searches. We'll look a little at basic searches and then we'll touch briefly on advanced searches. If you want to know more about advanced searches I've also provided some additional links here in the description of this video. So now I want to focus on collections or folders. So let's go over here to the left panel. Let's close the tags part for now. And again, you can see all of the folders or collections that I have uh, in my library. If you want to add a collection, you would just click here, like we've done before. I'm going to cancel that. The other thing that you can do is if you right click, you can add a sub collection. What that means is that you have a folder within a folder and that you can you can then drag any item you want to it. So if I click here, you can see here are the two things I've added to this folder. One great thing about Zotero is that you can add items to multiple collections. So I can add Monday to my translator review, I can add it to my cities collection, and it will be in all of those collections at the same time. Now if you create a collection that you want to actually get rid of, what you can do is you right click on it and you can say delete collection. Now be very careful here because you have two options. You can either delete the collection or delete the collection and the items in the collection. Generally speaking, you don't want to delete those items, so you just want to click delete collection. You hit OK and we're back to where we were before. One more thing that I want to show you in the collections pane is that if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a few items that actually aren't folders. The first is duplicate items, and that will show you what, uh, if you have any repeats in your entire library. So it's a good way of uh, taking out things that you don't need anymore. You also have unfiled items, and that simply means everything you've brought into your library that's not been put in a folder that you've created. And then finally you have the trash, which is for if you've accidentally hit delete collection and items, you can then pull things out of the trash. And that's pretty much it for collections. One question I get a lot from students is how should they distinguish between collections and tags? Let's select this as an example. Collections and tags. And here's my advice. It's a question of personal style. Some people like to have everything very carefully organized into folders and categories. Some people like to use tags. Essentially, it's the difference between the hunter and the gatherer. That being said, I do have a few recommendations. The first is I encourage you to be extremely aggressive with your use of tags. If you collect an item and you decide you're going to keep it, take a minute to tag it with all of the things that you think might be of use in the future. Countries, time periods, important scholars, uh, subjects, subject areas, anything that might be helpful down the road. My second piece of advice is that even though here on the collection side you can create folders within folders within folders and create very granular uh, categories, my advice is to not do that. Don't try to structure your library using folders because you will be keeping this library for your entire research life and the way you categorize things now might not be the way that you categorize things in the future. And so instead of having to constantly reorganize the hierarchy of your folders here, you can just have all of those different categories in tags and then search for those tags at different times uh, depending on the project that you need. And so that brings me to my third piece of advice, is that when you use folders, you should really only use them for two things. The first is as your inbox, and then the second is for the project that you're working on in that moment. You can see here that I'm working on a, a book review, and these are all of the sources in the book review that I am going to be using. And the reason that I put them into a folder is because if I need to quickly see all of the sources associated with the project that I'm working on, whether it's 10 sources for an annotated research bibliography or 50 sources for a thesis, it's just good to have them all in one place. So to sum up, 
Be aggressive with your tags. Be conservative with your folders. And really just use your folders for the projects that you're working on, not for creating structure within your library. I want to end this video talking a little bit about searches. Because once you've collected your sources, tagged them, maybe put them into collections, you still might have trouble tracking them down. Now the easy way to do this is to go to the search bar right here. Don't confuse it with the search bar for Firefox. You'll be searching the internet. Go to the search bar for Zotero. And you can type in the title, the creator, whether it's the editor, the author, the translator, or the year that something was published. So if I want to see all of the sources in this collection that were written by Baker, I can type that in and I can see, whoop, here's one. If I'm looking at my entire library and I want to see all of the sources by Baker, again, this is a quick way to find them. Let's go back to the inbox. Now, you can see here that it says title, creator, and year. If you want to cast a little bit of a wider net, you can click on this triangle here and select all fields and tags, which means it will search not only title, creator, and date, but also things like publisher, ISBN number, place of publication, etc., etc. And if you want to cast a really wide net, you can click on everything. And that means that Zotero will search not only everything in the parent items here, but it will also look at the PDFs or the snapshots. Let's see if I can find a snapshot. The snapshots that you've also included as child items to these parent items. So you can see here that if I click on my library and I search for something as broad as gender, I'm going to get tons of things, not just in the parent items, but also in the PDFs. One thing, just a quick tip that you should remember, is that when you're searching in the search bar here, you're going to be searching everything that's in this center pane. So if you're just in the inbox, you're only going to be searching items in the inbox. If you want to search your whole library, you'll have to click on My Library. That's really all you need to know about basic searches. But I do want to mention just one last thing. If you go here to the spyglass and you click on that, this is for running advanced searches. So you can search for items with a certain title and certain tags, or certain tags but without other tags. And then you can also save those searches. So if all of a sudden you want to work on a project that involves gender in Egypt, you can create a search for gender in Egypt and then save that. And what's called a smart folder will appear here on the uh, collections pane. Now I'm not going to walk you through that process. It's pretty detailed. but. Down below, I've included two resources that you can um, review if you want to learn more about advanced searches. The first is from uh, a blog called The Digital Researcher by Catherine Pope, and then the other is a library guide at Harvard University. So that's it for organizing your Zotero library. Again, remember, collections are on this side. The list of items within a collection are on this side, and all of the information for an item whether it's the publishing information or the tags you associated with it are on this side. And when you're deciding whether to use tags or collections or folders, my advice is be aggressive with tags and be conservative with folders and save them for the projects you're working on.